I am Kangi and Korea is going on at the moment. Do you or your team look at the Korean scene and try and pick out interesting stuff that they do or uh, look at the metas they're running and try and compare and contrast it to what you're doing? And how do you think the two scenes compare in terms of skill and ability in the game? Korean teams seem to generally value communication, teamwork and combos and like ult management a lot more than other teams that have more individually skilled players in terms of mechanical skill and just game sense and not necessarily better team players, but just better individual players like on their own in terms of playmaking potential, you know, crazy hit like headshot accuracy on McCree's or soldiers, just tracking. But Korean teams are more about teamwork and communication, and there's always something you can learn from them because they work really hard to achieve the highest level, like perfect teamwork and perfect ult combos and perfect ult management. So yeah, we take inspiration from Korean teams, but we don't seem like we don't have the mindset that Korean teams know exactly what they're doing. You want to find a good middle ground of teamwork and individual skill and using that along for plays to happen, but still playing as a full team and still playing with a good communication and teamwork. But we don't want to exclude individual skill because that's a real thing in this game. Like a good McCree can turn a fight just like that. And we want to be able to put our McCree in a situation to do that if the fight asks for it. But we also want to be ready to just win a fight of pure teamwork. The hero mechanics of the Koreans are really good, I think. Like, they're way better than Europeans ones. But like, I think aim-wise, Europeans will always be better at NA players than, than the Korean. Like, I don't even know why, but I just think that way. People think that Koreans are going to be like really good in this game, but I think... I mean, they'll be good, of course. I mean, they, like every team has like two teams there, and they switch out the rosters to make like a superstar team. I think every organization. But I think EU NA will be ahead of the Koreans for a long time in this game. I think that different things work in different regions. Like we just noticed it with coming back from Europe, from bootcamping almost a whole month in Europe. It didn't work here in NA. Like everything we practiced didn't work here. So I feel like we're watching them, obviously. We're looking what they're doing. Maybe it's better. Maybe we can steal a strat or something like that. But like we wouldn't like you straight up copy something and expect it to work just because it maybe works in Korea. Like it has to work here as well. So we might adjust it a little bit in that case. Well, it's always interesting to talk about I mean, just the IM, you're asking me about Korean versus North America, but it's like, there's actually two European teams there, right? And they both just got knocked out. So Lunatic High, what, 3-0 to Misfits, and then LW Red 3-1 to Rogue with their new lineup. So they didn't have much practice. Um, from my experience in Korea, I would say it's not necessarily that they're, like, let's talk about, you know, there's lots of excuses people can make, like, oh, they're, they're new, two new teams, which is completely legitimate, right? Rogue and Misfits completely revamped their rosters. But honestly, people vastly underrate the Koreans. And in general, be, between the three regions, Korea, like let's just say Korea, NA, and Europe, um, people, there's like this strange like assumption that European teams are absolutely number one right now in Overwatch, which is obviously true for a while at the, like, the top, top level. But there was never really any international competition at LAN except for Gamescom, because at E-League, we had completely separate groups. And so, I don't know, I feel like people's, like, assumptions are somewhat unfounded because we haven't had enough LAN tournaments where both tournaments are mixed in. Like, I'm at MLG, it's an NA only tournament. It's like, where are the Euro teams? I don't know. It's like, before that I was at E-League, I played only NA teams again. How do I stack up versus the European teams? I don't know. And I mean, there's online tournaments, so those are just a mess because you always have, you know, Europeans are playing with 200 ping or North American players playing with 200 ping. And so, in general, I would say, like, between the three regions, the West in general, both NA and Europe, completely underrate the Korean teams, and I feel they would like totally dominate the game, because not because of like like there's this I would say misconception where people believe like oh Lunatic High is like by far the number one team. Let's just I, was, I actually personally believe like one of the best teams. Let's just use this as like a random example. It's not necessarily that the top tier Korean teams are so good that they will dominate the scene. What is the most threatening part about Korea is one, they have more players than NA in Europe. They take solo queue infinitely more serious than NA in Europe. And the bigger problem is, I mean, let's talk about like how many teams there are in Korea. I went to Korea, you know how many teams I scrimmed that were really, really good? There's like 20 to 30. I come to NA, there's like eight to 10. They have like double to triple the amount of teams. Okay, double to triple amount of teams, same level of talent. How long do you think it'll take until each of them has a star player and then they all merge and form a really, really, really good team? Because we're seeing it right now. Lunatic High, I mean, they didn't actually merge. Let's talk about LW Red, because Lunatic High just shifted roles, which is pretty cool. But Luna, uh, LW Red, they had two star DPS players, Pine and Anahana. 
the rest of the team, either they weren't having success, or there's no chemistry, I don't really know. I'm not in the position to talk about you know, the inner workings of their team. But regardless, they took the two DPS players, put them on the other team that had really good supports and tanks, and now they just rolled rogue. And it's just like, I don't know, that's the type of thing I'm more concerned about when it comes to Korean teams. Not necessarily that they're strong right now, but they have the talent pool and the player base to be very unstoppable in the future. I think it's, it's important to just see what other top teams are playing, whether it's major things like, you know, whole team compositions or minor things like a certain push or a certain just positioning style. I think looking at a lot of other teams gives you a lot of other ideas. So we do look at, you know, European and Korean VOD. As far as how the regions stack up, I think, um, hmm. I think that each, each region has their own strengths. Obviously, there's a lot of mixing with a lot of top NA teams, you know, not necessarily being full NA teams. But I think that uh, each, each region has their own, own style. But I wouldn't, I think it's hard with how much, how little inter, international play, relatively, you know, little international play we have to determine actual rankings for for uh, the regions? Uh, we definitely look at the games and you know, at least see what they're doing because sometimes they have a lot of really good ideas. Their meta's sort of been very different to ours in like a few manners. Like a couple of them are still playing the uh, you know, Tracer Genji thing I saw. Uh, someone did it against Misfits. So they're playing like the monkey heavy dive comp. So it, it's, it seems a little all over the place at the moment there. Um, while you know, in North America, everyone's playing like heavy tanks. So it's, it's really interesting to like watch and draw from them. And you know, there's always more you can learn in the game. Even if you don't think it's a good strategy, it's, watching it is important.